The following is a special presentation of iRacing on LSR TV, your home for sim racing. Live tonight from the Texas Motor Speedway, LSR TV is happy to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome, as always, to our continuing coverage of the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series, powered by English Auto LLC. We're this evening from the Great American Speedway. The round of eight continues on these 2018 playoffs. And as always, we're so happy that you make your Monday night home with us. Uh, myself, Evan Pasoko, Brian Backlund upstairs. As always, Brett Wheeler bringing us to you. And well, we come off of a race at Martinsville a week ago with uh, Brandon Bowie punching his ticket into the championship for Ryan. So we are left with seven drivers, three spots, and two races to go if you count tonight. That's going to be a very interesting race for sure. And if I'm Brandon Bowie, I don't want to let off after winning last week. I want to come out here and try to win another race. I want to make these guys have to earn their way into the championship four on points. Go out here, try to win this race. Not only does it keep those guys from being able to win a race and guarantee themselves a spot, but you potentially can keep Andrew Freenars from getting to the final four. He's been so dominant, especially on these mile and a half tracks here tonight. And you got to believe he's going to be fast here tonight as well. But if you're Brandon Bowie and you can get up there and sneak a win in and take that away from the 88 car, that's potentially a competitor that you're keeping out of the final four. And of course, that is uh, where maybe the likes of Everhart Freedars are going to look. But honestly, those have been as we kind of talk about the updated playoff grid. So Bowie in, Falkenham up by five, Spencer Preet up by four, and Dylan Jones up by two. It is very difficult, Brian, I would say, to kind of pick and choose who's going to be in the best spot above or below that cut line. But you consider the fact that, again, by the time we've gotten to this point, the top eight drivers... I mean, any of them pretty much deserve it to get it in the round of four because I was just about to say, well, Eberhardt Farinar's at the very back of the points right now. Well, they've been some of the fastest cars over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they really have, and, and that's just part of the deal. But like we said, Andrew Freenars, he caught, got caught up in so many issues last week at Martinsville, and that put him in behind. He's only five points outside of the top four right now, but he is the lowest-running playoff driver. And that, you know, five points doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have small fields like we see here tonight, uh, five points can actually be pretty difficult to pick up, especially when you consider eight out of these drivers are playoff contending drivers. So it's going to be a challenge for all of these drivers. Of course, Andrew Freenars, he's usually pretty fast. He was fastest in practice. Provisionally, it looks like he's sitting on the pole. So he's definitely rose to the occasion. But uh, you know, this is a race where for a lot of these drivers, I wouldn't necessarily call it a must win situation, but definitely uh, something that you need to be mindful of as we get closer to the end of this race. And, of course, this race could be big. Nobody, I would say, is down and into that must-win part yet. Uh, but certainly, uh, a bad night uh, this evening is going to put you behind the eight ball. And when we head to Phoenix, that is always a racetrack that's not really a short track, but it's on the smaller side of things. And drivers can handle their business there as they wish. But I think this is the last uh, big points haul race that you could get. This race is going to come down to execution, limiting mistakes, and of course, uh, maybe whoever has that little bit additional in the tank, whereas, uh, you know, when you get to Phoenix, it's certainly a much more specialized track. So it's hard to tell, and the points grid is not going to show it. But if you are not a fan of Phoenix, maybe you're a little bit more stressed coming into this one as Q sets to uh, close out right here. Uh, yeah, Phoenix is one of those tracks, and we, we heard from a couple of drivers, Daniel Eberhardt being one of them, that he doesn't really care for Phoenix that much, and he felt like Martinsville and Phoenix, were the, or Martinsville and Texas, rather, were the two races that he really needed to capitalize and get good points out of, and I feel like that's going to be the case for several of these drivers. Phoenix is one of those tracks, it's, it's just very unique from anything else that we run on, so I, I think tonight is a, a very big race, but uh, certainly you want to put yourself in a good position points-wise. You don't want to get yourself into a hole and then be in a must-win situation on a track like Phoenix. 
So with that, the qualifying session is drawn to a close, so let's go Trackside. We'll introduce you. This is your LSR TV starting grid for round number 28 on 2018. A pole position, Andrew Ferninars in at number 88 Ford. He will bring us to the green flag this evening. Outside of the front row, the number 11 car, Dylan Jones is going to join him. Jones just above the cut line. Ferninars in the gray, headed into this evening's race. Carl Shad, meanwhile, going to bring up the inside of row two. Jeff Andy's lobster roll, Ford Fusion will start in third position. Spencer Preet right there as well with the top four. And Michael Gorilla rounds out your top five yep and last week's winner and the only driver guaranteed a spot in the final four right now brandon Bowie. he starts p6 tonight no stress no worries at all for that 43 card here tonight michael cozy jr will start from the seventh position then we have david washington starting eighth daniel falkingham talk about the run he had last week at martinsville finish up in the top three he's going to start ninth here tonight and then jason jacoby will start p10 Continuing on through, final couple of cars to take a time at the queue. Kyle Kamer, 11th, Eric extend for 12th. With David Comstock, Tom Morano through the outside of row number 7. 15th is Galen DeGidman. And the rest of the provisionals to Dwayne Vincent in 16th. Daniel Everhart, 17th. And Ross Kane of an 18th position is a look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. And of course, Texas high speed action. As tonight we go racing for 100 laps at 150 miles around this 1.5 mile speedway. The pace car is down and in. Let's roll deeper into the playoffs. Happy that you're with us. LSR TV at the iRacing Esports Network. Green flag in the air. We're off for the Texas 150. And how about Dylan Jones getting a really good restart on the outside line there as he stayed right with Andrew Freenar until they got to the corner. Then Freenar is able to pull away by about a half a car length. Dylan Jones now settles in right behind him, and now they're sorting it out behind him. Four position, it looks like Michael Gorilla is trying to make a move, as is Spencer Free. Everybody's fighting for the bottom of the racetrack right now. That won't be the case after about 15 laps or so. You're going to see these guys moving around, moving up the racetrack once the tires wear away and the grip starts to go away. And of course, high speeds means that that grip is going to go away pretty quickly as these drivers rocket around this Texas Motor Speedway. 20 degrees to Banky down at this end of the racetrack and one and two. 24 down to the three and four side of things. And only the top two cars or so, the ones that are able to break away. Fight is on now for third. As Spencer Preet was able to take it away on the start. And look at the big run he's got coming out of turn four. Not a great run for Dylan Jones. And Spencer Preet is going to go for two early here. He'll go to the outside of the 11 to Ford. That's the fight for second spot. and allow Farinars to pull a little bit extra from P1. Spencer Preet stuck on the outside line in one and two, and in turns one and two, the outside line doesn't really work as well as it will down here in three and four. As here comes Gorilla looking to the inside of Spencer Preet now, almost makes contact with the apron there, and that's going to cause him to check up. That gives Spencer Preet a shot. He gets a great run coming off of turn four, almost makes contact with the wall. That 37 car fighting hard on the outside line, but now he's going to have his work cut out for him because down here in one and two, there's a big bump in the middle of the corner. Actually, about three quarters of the way through the corner. That's where you're really going to have a hard time. Right here, this is where he's running across that bump, and it really upsets the car. And you can see how much time he loses as he gives the position up to Michael Gorilla, and now has Brandon Bowie to his inside trying to take that position away as well. Yeah, on the inside, look at the 43 machine even struggle, push up a little bit, and all of a sudden, Spencer Preet was looking to charge in the second spot, now could barely hang on as he starts to slide back up on the outside of the racetrack. So Jones stayed second, Gorilla took over third, but right there, Brandon Bowie passes for fourth, and on the inside, Carl Shedd gets tied at a two, and he really used up Spencer Preet there. The 37 lift, or it probably would have been a big accident, and it's going to cost him three more spots with Cozy and Washington now coming through. And Spencer has to be very careful here tonight. He is in one of the top four positions as they were started this race. He had a four point cushion over the fifth place driver, which is David Comstock. So he has to be very careful here tonight. Cannot afford any big mistakes. And that could have been a huge one. If had he got put up into the wall and got that car hurt this early on, it could have potentially killed his chances of making it. 
to the Final Four at Homestead in just a couple of weeks' time. So has to be very careful here. You can see he's trying to fight back. He's on the inside trying to make a move on David Washington. Can't make it happen. And now he's just got to settle in in line right now. If I'm the uh, crew chief of Spencer Preet right now, Evan, I'm going to try to tell him just to calm down. We're seven laps into a 100-lap race. You're still in a good spot, sitting in eighth. There's plenty of time for you to get your track position back. You've got to make sure you finish this race. You certainly do, and the way that it looks right now, drivers are very much up and on the wheel and concerned right off for the get-go. A couple of drivers try to make up for uh, qualifying efforts that they wish they would have had a better opportunity at, and side-by-side -side battle a little bit further back. Just checking to see if it is still 2x2. Two two. It is the 8 of Kyle Kamer at a 7 to Jason Jacoby. Jacoby has kind of had on or off nights all season long since we saw him jump into this thing at the start of this third and final segment and he's kind of stuck back at the back here. Daniel Everhart, one of your championship cars, wants a way through but he can't get around this fight right now for 10. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to pass early on in the run while there's still a lot of grip in the tires. It won't be until about 15 laps or so into the run where these tires will really start to give up. You'll see these cars slipping and sliding around. That's also about the time you'll start seeing some of these drivers really start to migrate up the racetrack, more so than in turns three and four. You'll see them be able to move up the racetrack and find some grip. You won't really see it too much down in one and two, maybe very late in the run, but uh, at this point of the run, everybody's still staying right on the bottom of the racetrack. A couple of guys starting to move up just a little bit to see Dave Washington. He's running a little bit of a, 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 a middle groove through the middle of the corner and then cuts it right back down to the bottom of the racetrack. But uh, right now, everybody's just fighting for all the grip they can on the inside of the racetrack. And how about Michael Gorilla going up there, taking that second position away from Dylan Jones? He's driven away from Dylan Jones and is actually keeping pace with Andrew Freenars right now. And I don't want to say that he's in a must-win situation, but when you're outside of the top four, Evan, you almost have to put yourself in that in that position just because you know who you're chasing. Right now, Andrew Freenars is leading this race. He was not in a position to win this thing, or he was actually the, the last driver in the uh, playoff grid right now. So that's, that's going to move the entire playoff grid around completely. Yeah, it'll certainly shuffle things up because if Farinars would be able to hold on to this, get another trip to victory lane, that would automatically put him through. Therefore, Daniel Falkenham will enter tonight second. He would fall to third. Spencer Breed in third would fall to fourth. And live points would have Dylan Jones out as he runs in a number four position. Still a good spot. Uh, but Spencer Pree does a run behind him, so it is very tight. That's what you expect to see once we've made the amount of eliminations that we've had. We've seen the likes of Casto, Ewing, Silver, and Wood go home at around his 16. Cozy, Kamer, Kalisto, and Vincent eliminated at around a 12. And certainly every position matters. If your average finish in these uh, three races at a round of eight is not, I think, inside of the fives, uh, then you're certainly going to be in a half to move on uh, courtesy of a race win. That's how tight the competition is going to be. Well, I think if I just did my math correctly, the way it stands right now, Spencer Preet would be out of the top four by just one point. He came in with two points over that number 11 car of Dylan Jones. And Dylan Jones, as you just mentioned, he would be uh, knocked to the final spot in that. He would jump ahead of Spencer Preet because he is three positions ahead of him, but he would only be one point ahead of him in the playoff running. So it is that tight right now for these spots. And the only people that feel comfortable, the only person that feels comfortable is Brandon Bowie. Andrew Freenard feels pretty good right now because he's out front. And as it would stand right now, he'd officially hold a spot in the final four, but we still have a long ways to go. 85 laps left in this race. Anything can happen. You've got to have a flawless night on pit road and on the racetrack in order to execute all the way to the finish. And what we've been seeing on the one and a half milers, the intermediate race tracks up until this point this season, 125 lap contest, a little bit less than that this evening. As this race, as he mentioned, 100 laps, 150 miles. So certainly does modify the pitch strategy a little bit. This race is incident free thus far. The first place car is only six seconds ahead of the last place car. So again, that goes to show you just how evenly matched these speeds are top to bottom, Brian. If this were to stay green and you know, the likelihood of that goes up and up with every passing lap as these drivers spread out a little bit and kind of settle into a spot in line. What would the pitch strategy look like with a 100-lap distance? 
I, I think at this point you would probably try to make it a one-stop race. These guys can go about 50 laps, 55 laps on a tank of gas, so I think you just want to make it a one-stop race. However, you could see guys try to short pit and maybe make it a two-stop race. Maybe pit around like lap 35 and then again on lap 70 and try to use the tires and, and the speed differential between fresh tires and old tires to your advantage because when we get to that point of the run, you're going to see probably about a two-second drop-off. We're actually already getting close to that. We're a second and a half off of what these guys were running and qualifying already, and we're only 17 laps into this race. So uh, it's really just gonna depend on your situation. If you're one of the playoff drivers, I think you're gonna do what all the other playoff drivers do. You, you don't wanna get off strategy from what they are doing because you're racing them. If you're Brandon Bowie, you have nothing else to lose. Why not take a gamble? Maybe go for that two-stop strategy, see if the tires make that big of a difference and go for another win. It's always what these drivers are going to have to weigh. And again, there's always the risk of because the first driver in on the points is five above the cut line to the lowest driver out on the points only being five out. That if you are going to make a gamble, the payoff could certainly be huge. But and if it doesn't work out, you're really uh, going to feel the effects of that. So it is, what is it worth? You don't want to not make that call now, be conservative, and then be forced to make a call and be in total desperation about it uh, when we get to Phoenix International Raceway next Monday night for the round of eight finale. So, you know, there's all those little calculations that these drivers are making in their heads. And, uh, of course, it makes it a lot easier when you have green flag racing where you can kind of control it and on the eight car, David Washington slams into the outside wall and he will spin to a stop. There is the caution for the first time this evening. The Donnie and David Washington loose at a turn four off and into the grass and as he tried to hang on, smacked the outside wall. David at Comstock was about five feet from being smoked by that car coming up hot. Yeah, that could have been huge for one of our playoff drivers right there. But Dave Washington, man, he had been struggling with that car for a handful of laps now and just could not get the power down coming off the corner. And that's a result of the, the tires just beginning to wear out. We were at that point of the run where the tires were really giving up and the grip just wasn't there. And that's why we were seeing some of these guys move to the top of the racetrack. You get a straighter run off the corner and you, you don't have to use as much wheel coming off the corner. It definitely helps with the handling. And unfortunately, he was trapped down on the bottom because he was racing the one car of Daniel Falkingham, and he just couldn't keep control of that car. Uh, but now we have our first set of pit stops, and we've seen all season long that pit stops can define a race. You have to have absolutely no mistakes down here on pit road. Evan Pasoko, no speeding. You can't slide through your box, and then your pit crew has to execute flawlessly if you want to get the job done here tonight. Certainly those are a lot of the combinations as drivers head down to the pit lane. What we'll do is uh, we'll take a uh, quick opportunity to step aside. And when we come back for a restart from Texas Motor Speedway, Frenars leads down pit road. You're watching the Real Sim Racing Cup Series on the iRacing Esports Network. back live from the Texas Motor Speedway as we continue the round of eight of the Real Sim Racing Cup Series powered by English Auto LLC. Andrew Fridar's first in and first out off of the pit lanes with a major change is it's Gorilla second, Jones to third, Bowie four, and Michael Cozy Jr. rounds out your top five. Lights out on top of the pace car will restart at a moment, but here's another look at the English Auto LLC playoff grid headed into this evening with Randy and Bowie having advanced already courtesy of the race what a week ago for Mark Martinsville, everybody else finding seven remaining cars, three remaining spots, but a win 
also guarantees you your spot in. And the scenario is still the same from earlier on, Brian. Frenar's last coming into tonight, leading. I know it's early, only 22 laps in, but he's in a very good spot. Good pit stop, no mistakes. Critically, that was something we were talking about. And uh, he'll restart as the control car. And based on what I'm seeing right now, Michael Gorilla running in second, Dylan Jones running third, Spencer Preet is all the way back in sixth. Right now, Spencer Preet would be out by just one point. Gorilla, who is having a great night, he would still be out by three points. Dylan Jones would currently hold that final spot in the top four. Uh, so it is extremely tight, and every point positions, every every position on the racetrack matters, and you have got to go for it here if you're Michael Gorilla. This is your opportunity. You're starting right next to the 88 car. Go get him and try to get that lead away. Base car get it added in. It's the 88's opportunity to dictate the start, and he is gone. Green flag of the air back underway. 22 laps down from Texas. A long way to go. Jones on the inside. He'll immediately slide third to second. Let's move the 11 back into his starting spot, P2. And as they get single file off of turn two, everybody's fighting for speed on the bottom of the racetrack. Once again, you can see Daniel Eberhardt. He is stuck out of line back there trying to pass the number 77 of Michael Cozy. He's down on the bottom of the racetrack, starts to drift up in the middle of the corner, almost makes contact with the 77. Now Cozy gets a great run coming off turn four. Can he clear the 90 of Eberhardt before they get to turn one? It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. He's going to get stuck out on the outside line. And you can see Eberhardt down on the bottom of the racetrack. He has the preferred groove now. He's going to be able to inch ahead and clear the 77 for that position. That'll move Everhart up to P6. Critical spot for Daniel Everhart started 17th out of the 18 cars in this race. Not good for somebody who came into this evening in the grade. The Donnie is showing a lot of speed. If you can get maybe two, three more spots here off for the race start, it'll be in a very good position as this race continues to work on behind Tim Cozy under fire this time from the seven and Jason Jacoby. There's a very good job in turn one. And even though it was a little bit late back to the throttle, he's got it. So two spots down and a lap for Cozy. Not a good run since we went back green for the 77 Chevy. He's just been falling like a rock on this restart right here, but he's trying to fight back as he got a great run through the middle of three and four. Now looks to the inside of Jason Jacoby. He's going to have that preferred groove down in turns one and two. The bottom of the racetrack is where you want to be, and it looks like he's going to take advantage of that, and he'll move back ahead of the seven of Jason Jacoby and take that position back. Now Jacoby tries to do the crossover. He backed it up and tried to get that run, but it doesn't look like he's going to have enough momentum. So Cozy will fight back and get back up into that seventh position. Another driver that we're, we haven't really gotten to talk about so far that I'm a little concerned about right now, Evan, is the 42 of David Comstock. He is outside looking in on this playoff grid. He started in the back, started P13. He's only up to 10th, and while normally you would say maybe p 10s not bad, uh, when you're chasing all of your playoff contenders, uh, it's not where you want to be. And even further up towards the front, it is a big battle for third. Michael Gorilla with a huge defensive run at a turn two. He'll stay in front of a hard charge to Brandon Bowie. Spencer Preet is right there. Somehow, he'll find a spot down in front of Everhard. But if in this group here, basically six cars all the way from Gorilla down to Jason Jacoby, all in a big line here. What a mistake takes you all the way to the back, so you could possibly, depending on how all this shakes out, have a swing of three or four positions, plus or minus, and will have to dive low in the back straight away. David Washington, who brought out that caution flag back on track. The damage number 98 for two laps down right now in 18. I was trying to hang on and salvage something out of tonight, but not does not have the speed in that car anymore but how about Dylan Jones on this restart on the, the more recent restart he fell back to the third position and actually was fighting for fourth position when that caution came out but he has marched out to second place and he has held on to it uh, for the time being now you can see Gorilla and Brandon Bowie are beginning to close on in him just a little bit the 43 car Brandon Bowie he's already moved up the racetrack down in three and four he's running that middle groove right now and look at the run he's going to get this time through the middle of the corner can he translate that into a move for the third position he looked like he was going to try to go to the outside now he's going to the inside of that 17 no he decides to back out of it Gorilla is going to hold on but uh, you can see just how much of a run you can get on the top side of the racetrack and that is on fairly fresh tires once these tires really begin to wear out and they start moving up the racetrack like that the outside line is really going to be strong off of turn four yeah that's really the, uh, the difficult part is you can 
sometimes maybe challenged to make a move, but it, it is certainly tough getting away that to prefer to positioning from one another. So uh, we'll see how all of this plays through. For me, ours has opened up a gap, probably the biggest we've seen so far this evening. The fastest lap last time by to the 88 Ford. It's now nearly a second back to Jones, still third. Gorilla, or I should say Jones, sorry, second. Gorilla, third. But the movie pre-rounded out your top five. Of course, those full intervals going across the top of the screen so you can keep an eye on where everybody is at any given moment. But certainly Everhart, the biggest mover. Like I said, he needs to maybe get one, two, three more positions here, and uh, he can really get into the wheelhouse. The restart would certainly help him out a third of the way through next time around as we would take lap 33 of 100. Uh, but it looks like now we're starting to see as rubber gets put down, that track temp starts to go up a little bit. A uh, driver's different line. Spencer Preet was pretty much low the whole the way through one and two. And look at the nod of the inside. It was a different line for Eberhard. He went high, tucked low, and it's going to give him that pass for P5. Every position that Daniel Eberhardt makes up right now is a critical one because he was also on the outside looking in, coming into tonight, five points below the cutoff. Uh, but when this race began. So he needs to try to make as much time on the racetrack as he can. Now runs the high side down in one and two, trying to make something happen up there. That, that opens the door for Spencer Preet, but he's able to play defense and hold on to that position up in P5 now. Goes back to the top of the racetrack in three and four. You can see everybody starting to move up just a little bit. Other than the front couple of guys, uh, that's where all the grip is starting to appear. And you can see Everhart gets a great runoff of turn four. He drives away from that 37 car, Spencer Preet. Now we have a side-by-side -side battle for second. As here comes Michael Gorilla to the inside of Dylan Jones, trying to fight back to get up to the front. Once again, Dylan Jones fights hard on the outside line. And Gorilla is now going to have to drive it in deep down here in three and four if he wants to make this position, uh, or take this position away, rather. Dylan Jones fights hard on the outside line. Can he get the power down and get the run off the corner? It doesn't look like it. Gorilla moves ahead to take P2 away. He gets that spot, and don't uh, count your horses yet. I think Dylan Jones is going to want to fight back soon. He looks low, and I mean, look at Everhart again. That very noticeable different line. Those three cars, two, three, four, they're packed down low, all pretty much following each other in a line, whereas uh, obviously Everhart taking a much higher approach. What he's focusing on is using the tons of banking that make Texas Motor Speedway to the fast side. Look at that. He goes up where Bowie went, but Bowie stays high. He'll go to the outside at a fight for third, and it looks like Jones is going to lose another one, but what a shot as Eberhardt gives a shove to the back of Brandon Bowie, so Bowie going to take over third, and I think if he can close this quarter out, it'll be another spot gained for Eberhardt. Challenge for the 11, but there it is. Move the Nandi now up to P4. And it's worth noting that the last three laps in a row, that 90 car of Daniel Eberhardt was the fastest car on the racetrack. And a couple of laps ago, he was three tenths of a second quicker than the, the race leader, Andrew Greenard. So he has found something on the outside line that is really working for him. He does lose a little bit of time this last lap by, but that's because he was battling for position with Bowie and Dylan Jones. He just took that position away from Brandon Bowie to move in the third position now. So that 90 car is on rails right now. And I would be very concerned if I was Michael Gorilla and Andrew Freenarch because he has marched his way up through the field. He started all the way back in 17th, and it's only taken him 37 laps to break the top three. So it certainly looks like the Donna machine has got all the speed, and it is certainly difficult as well to compare his lot times to Freenarch because he's making the passes, but the last time around, he was the best. And by taking the outside line, he'll leave the bottom open. So Brandon Bowie is able to pull back alongside of course, that again, the run off the corner is going to be so difficult to counteract, but uh, if Bowie drives it down into the corner hard enough, he may uh, be a, enough of a challenger to disturb the Nami for a little bit longer. I think it'll end right here. As again, that 43 washes up a tad off the turn, and there it is. Now Everhart solely in control of uh, what is the number three position, the highest spot he's been in all night long. There's a couple of drivers making up spots. You're talking about somebody like Jason Jacoby, 10 to 7, David Comstock, 13th to 8th. But certainly spearheading that charge is Eberhard. And to be honest, as he looks to try to make a move on Gorilla for second spot, he's only 1.5 seconds off of the top spot. So he's been making these passes, but everybody not losing, and there's a mistake. Gorilla gets into the outside wall. He'll spin, he locks it up. Caution flag flies at lap number 40, but a critical mistake for a playoff driver. 
and he was just trying to get everything he could out of that 17 car, smacked the outside wall, and unfortunately could not save that car, slides it down, almost comes back into the, the uh, racing groove in front of traffic, but somehow does a great job keeping that car stopped down on the bottom of the racetrack, but a little bit of damage to the right side of that car, not that bad, but all that track position that Michael Guerrilla had fought so desperately for to get up to the front, well, now he's just given all of it up. There's 17 cars on the lead lap, and he is at the very back of that pack. So a huge heartbreak. And honestly, I think this might be a heartbreak for Andrew Freenars, too, because now he's got Daniel Everhart on his bumper. And depending on how these pit stops go, he's going to have to worry about that 90 car on this next restart. You really see it on that shot there. Curious if it was just Guerrilla feeling the pressure from behind, trying to overdrive it a little bit. He did make the smart decision, though, to lock it down, not try to drive that out of the grass. Sometimes if you let it roll, uh, you end up wrecking into the outside wall or uh, you end up onto the pit lane, and not only do you probably have a wrecked race car into the inside wall, but you've also got a pit road speeding penalty. Instead, he'll go all the way to the back. Pit stops once more, and this time, Ferdinar is going to head all the way down to the very last pit stall on pit road, while Daniel Eberhardt has to peel off from right on the back bumper to one of the first. Let's see if the Bernardi machine is able to make something happen, or if Ferdinar's can go two for two on the pit lane. Call's going to be four tires. And Eberhardt's going to be the first one into his box. No mistakes getting in. He's very clean into the pit box looking for four tires and fuel. Now looking up towards the front of the field. I don't see anybody with any mistakes up there. Andrew Farina is also going to be getting four tires and fuel. Eberhardt, meanwhile, is already down and away. Now the question is, can he get out of his box and get to the line before Andrew Freenars? The answer is going to be no. Freenars wins by a mile. Everhart's got a drag race with Brandon Bowie. I'm not sure that, and, or that Everhart got it. It looks like Brandon Bowie might have won that race off pit road. Then we've got Daniel Everhart and followed by Dylan Jones and then Carl Shedd to be the top five. But what a pit stop for that 88 car. They've got him out there by a couple of seconds over everybody else when they came out of the pits. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's impressive stuff. We were talking about maybe the challenge coming from the 90 for second place. Instead, it's Brandon Bowie who picks up a spot from him. And, I mean, at that point, Farinars was gone. It was insane how good he is on pit road. And uh, when you got the number one pit stall, normally the advantage that we refer to is if it's a side-by-side -side, coming to the uh, exit stripe there with the scoring loop is that you might have a nose in front, but... I mean, he was five, six, seven, eight car lengths gone. So certainly comfortable if I'm Andrew Farinars. The uh, pit stops now behind me. Uh, the now my primary concern is going to be that uh, Brandon Dabui may have picked up a spot, yes. But notoriously, it seems that these intermediate racetracks that sometimes starting third is better than restarting in second. And that fast car of Daniel Everhart now is still going to be right on my bumper. Uh, it's going to be very interesting for sure. It's also worth noting Spencer Preet had to go to the back. He had a penalty on pit road, so he is back there with Michael Guerrilla. So that's two of our playoff contenders uh, that have had some issues here in the last handful of laps. And unfortunate for both of these drivers. And that does kind of completely shake up the playoff grid because Spencer Preet was one of those guys that was on the inside uh, by four points. And now he's at the very back. So uh, he's going to be looking to have to make up quite a few spots on the racetrack. Uh, you've got Andrew Freenars leading, so that moves the entire playoff grid, and that gives guys like Daniel Eberhardt, Dylan Jones, David Comstock, and Daniel Falkingham gives them an opportunity here with guys like Michael Gray and Spencer Preet in the back to try to make up some points if they can keep this track position and keep those guys back there for the rest of this race. Uh, we're already close to the halfway point of this thing, so it's not going to be long before we're talking about who's in victory lane. Uh, this is the time of the race where you got to go, and I think we're seeing some strategy play out here, Evan Pasoko. I think right now we're on the edge of the fuel window where these guys could potentially stretch it to the end of this race. I just saw David Comstock and a handful of other drivers peel off to come to pit road. Daniel Falkingham joined them. A couple of these playoff guys may be taking a gamble to see if they can steal a win here tonight. When we were talking earlier about the strategy, if this race were to go 100 laps, you said it would pretty much be uh, halfway home is when you make a one stop. We're still shy of that by six laps, but it was uh, fuel only. For Brandon Bowie, certainly I uh, think it was the same that it was for Falkenham, uh, for Kamer, and Preet. So the concern here is now, as everybody else has doubled up, but we're going to get set to restart from Texas, is that, well, if this race has a caution flag or 20 laps or so, you're going to have to pit for tires, and everyone's just going to kind of be back in a wash, and uh, certainly that uh, gamble to come down to the pit lane doesn't work out. Now, this race goes green flying to the end. You look like a genius. And those four or five cars, whatever the number ones that came in the pit there, 
could have just made a move that puts them in a position to challenge for the race win here tonight from the Lone Star State. We'll see what happens, though. The situation in the front row shumbled up a little bit, but it is still Andrew Ferdinand is in control, and Daniel Everhart looking for the first race lead for him tonight. Going to be on the outside of the front row in second. He sits back a little bit to try to catch the name of 88 machine on the go. It's not going to work, though. It is a great jump for Andrew Ferdinand's back green at lap 45. Everhart defends second atop Jones. It's Shed Jacoby 4-5. And Daniel Everhart now has that track position. We saw how fast he was on the longer run. So now that he's already up here, it's going to be very interesting to see if he can stay with the 88 and if he can get up there and pass the 88 for a position. These guys might be teammates, but this is for a shot at a championship. You can no longer treat each other like your teammates. You've got to treat everybody like you're one of the biggest competitors out there and this is one of the biggest competitors out there for Daniel Everhart you want to take this away from Andrew Freenar so this is a big opportunity here for him if he can get the job done single file through the front you got to look back around the Ross Cato machine to see any action actually right behind him we got Dwayne Vincent and Galen Goodman and Galen just had a big wiggle coming off of turn two had to get up a ton of time and that's going to open the door for Brandon Bowie to take a position away. And I'm looking behind him, and I think all these guys that hit it, I think they're still trying to do this fuel strategy because none of them are really racing that hard. Looks like they're trying to conserve a little bit of fuel back here. Well, six laps shy of the halfway point, so at a 56-lap run is what they want it to happen. And, of course, uh, maybe a smaller part of all of that is if you're racing really hard, uh, might cause an accident. I think that their strategy is dependent on this race going to green, unless it comes out in five laps. And everybody pits, and it's not that big of a difference. But uh, especially for somebody like Abui, who is up in the number two spot now running in 10th, uh, unless the car, unless he gets all the way back up to second place, and then the yellow comes out with it, without anybody else pitting, uh, he needs this race to go green. So that is certainly the hope for the rest of the drivers. And it is, tends to be this middle portion of the race where we do see some of the longer green flag runs. We've seen tons of it on this 2018 Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series campaign. Uh, no doubt that tonight could certainly be another one of those ones. But in the meantime, the battle of the rest has Farinars, three tenths ahead of Everhart. Give it five laps or so. Once these guys got their feet underneath them, then we'll revisit that interval to see if anybody's making some noise. There's a little bit of a pack of cars uh, way back here. Preet Guerrilla, some of those drivers who pitted all racing together. But uh, the field certainly spread out, I think, a lot more on this restart than they have in the past. I'm looking at that group of cars that's in the back, and I, I think this is by design, and, I, and I, I understand why Brandon Bowie's doing what he's doing. Brandon Bowie already has a win. He's guaranteed to be racing for a championship in two weeks at Homestead, so he has nothing to lose. He's going out here, and he's going to drive the wheels off this car, and he put himself in a position where he might potentially be able to make it to the end where everybody in front of him cannot. But if you're guys like Daniel Falkingham, Michael Guerrilla, uh, David Comstock, any of these playoff contenders back here, you need to make sure you can make it to the end of this race on fuel now. Uh, you, you put yourself in this box where you've given up all your track position in hopes that you can run to the finish. Now you have to conserve fuel and make sure that you have enough to get to the run or to the end. If Brandon Bowie doesn't make it, if he runs out like the guys in front of him, it's no big deal. He's still going to race for a championship. This is something that you're going to see these guys doing for the rest of this run, or at least until their spotters and crew chiefs feel comfortable uh, that they are going to make it to the checkered flag. And then, like you said, Evan, you have to hope at this point you've committed to the strategy you have to hope there is no caution the rest of the way. And that is what you hope, so maybe that's why you take it a little bit easier. And, and listen, those drivers know who they came down pit road with, so the crew chiefs, the spawners, all those guys you were talking about there, uh, they're going to make sure that they know, you know, don't necessarily go up and push really hard on the cars in front of you. They they didn't come back down and top off on tires. Everybody just pitted with tires a lot before that, so they don't have any tire advantage. It's not like they get a blow to the field. Just kind of keep an eye on those other three or four cars, whatever the number was and just race around them because that's really what your strategy uh, is on because uh, you're talking about, you know, four or five seconds throughout the field right now of uh, intervals uh, coming down pit roads basically an entire lap of time. So, I mean, you could take it way easy. You're going to be out in front. If this goes green, everybody else has to come down pit road and you are able to save eat up. But with all of that, we now cross the halfway point in tonight's Texas 150. So let's take this opportunity to look top to bottom with our iRacing Midway Race Break brought to you by iRacing, the world's premier online racing game with professionally organized racing from NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, and more. I lot number 54, Andrew Ferradars, leads this race as he came into tonight eighth out of the eight drivers at a playoffs looking for a win to go to Homestead. His gap is stable, three-tenths 
atop Daniel Everhart, who sits P2 right now. The Nani machine is plus 15 and has been best car all night. Carl Shedd, nice and quiet right there, third spot. Good run so far for the 45-40s ahead of Jason Jacoby, up six to P4. And Dylan Jones running out your top five at a moment. Michael Cozy Jr. is into P6. Brandon Bowie behind in the number seven position with Eric Stanford cracking the top ten. He's eighth. Ross Cato up nine spots to P9. And another driver in the green, Dwayne Vincent, rounds out your top ten. Galen Goodman is in the 11th position right now, and then you have your list of drivers that are trying to make it to the end on fuel. Daniel Falkingham currently sits in 12th. Michael Guerrilla is 13th. Both of those drivers, including Spencer Preet in 14th, they are all playoff contending drivers. Then you have Kyle Kamer in 15th, then another playoff contending driver, David Comstock, who's actually making the move to take that 15th position away. He's currently scored in 16th. Then you have Tom Morano in 17th, and David Washington, who had that early wreck. He's two laps down in 18th. And that has been a look at your iRacing Midway Race Break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, visit iRacing.com to sign up today. And Evan Masoka, there's a lot of things going on in the iRacing service right now. Uh, of course, we saw the new F1 car that we're going to have here shortly. And of course, all the um, content we have with the NASCAR stuff, it's certainly a great time to join the iRacing service. We've got a lot of new tracks. You mentioned that uh, that F3 car is coming, the uh, the Charlotte Roval to Subica Circuit. Uh, tons of stuff, and not only is it normally the 40% off new iRacing memberships, but the Black Friday sale is also on right now. So if you go to iRacing.com, just look on the homepage there, up to 50% off new memberships. For the Black Friday deal, you click on that uh, big image that'll pop up at the home screen at iRacing.com to get more info on which promo codes to use. So certainly, now's the time to do it and get involved with the service. Lots of stuff coming as the uh, 2018 racing calendar draws to a close. And well, on that note as well, this full the Wrestling Racing Cup Series drawing to a close. We hope that you join us next week on Monday the 19th. We'll go to Phoenix International Raceway, last race in its round of eight. And then, of course, we close the season out on November the 26th. That one from Homestead, Miami, with a four-driver winner-take-all finale as we continue to wait and see how all of this uh, shakes out and how the playoffs uh, may look until then. We don't know. We only know that it's going to be booing in. And uh, right now it's looking like Freydars is in a good spot. Now we're seeing Eberhardt, though, Brian, as we kind of work into this run. The Nani machine going up to the outside of the racetrack there and diving back down low. He's no longer following the 88 around. He's kind of been stagnant right behind him. The Nani's searching. It worked well for him last time. And, you know, I'm very surprised that we have not seen Andrew Freenar start to search around as well. He's got to be looking in his mirror and seeing that 90 car get bigger and bigger in his mirror with every lap that passes. If I was Andrew Freenar at this point, I'd be making a change. And here he goes. He goes up top in three and four this time, trying to find that speed that the 90 car has. But he, he runs lower than Eberhardt does off the corner. And you can see what a difference that makes because here comes Eberhardt with a big run. He's able to get to within a car length of the 88 car, not close enough to make a move yet. Uh, but he is definitely there, and he has proven he's got the faster car of the two at this point of the run. Now is the question, can he make the move for the race lead to take it away? He gets right to the back bumper of Andrew Freenars as they head to three this time. He now looks like he's going to run just a little bit higher group. Andrew pulls up to take that line away and to take the air away. This is going to make things very difficult on that 90 car, but here he comes with a big run off turn four. Big run that time to turn four. He's on the bumper, and he's very adamant on going to the outside of the racetrack. Probably could have gone low if he wanted to, but again, I think the 88 of Ferdinand is very aware that that 90 is using that outside line. So the 88 machine, therefore, gave him the bottom. And look again, the 90 with the big run, but he doesn't go to the inside. So once more... Uh, Ferdinand's kind of playing with the Nani car, knowing that Everhart is fast when he enters the corner high. So he's going to leave the inside line wide open and dare the Nani to mix it up if he wants to make the pass. And, and that's pretty much what you have to do. And now you see Everhart run the top in one and two, just trying to find something different. Uh, you have to take away the line that is working best for the guy that's chasing you and make him do something different. You can't just let him keep doing that. We see that time and time again in the real world when these guys get to be racing. Uh, it may not be the quickest line for Andrew Freenars right now, but it's playing defense to hold that 90 car back. I don't think it's going to work, though, because here comes Daniel Everhart. He got a great run off turn four. He looks to the inside. We're side by side for the race lead, down in one and two. This could be for a spot in Miami. 
and Eberhardt knows what's on the line. He's battling hard on the inside of the racetrack. Can he take the lead away? He's got a great run, but now he's going to be at a disadvantage down here in three and four. There is lap traffic. Will David Washington be in the way of either one of these drivers? He runs up against the wall to give both these leaders room, and Eberhardt is able to take it to the, the bottom of the racetrack and take the lead away on lap 64. Oh, but a big bobble at a turn four, and he nearly throws it away, and Andrew Farinar snatches it back just as quickly. Daniel Eberhardt doesn't even get credited with a lap lad through all of that. He finally had to go down low, make that move where he's not comfortable, and Farinars knew that he wound it up in three and four, just like Eberhardt had every single lap to him. And I don't think if the Nani doesn't make that bobble, that Farinars' run would have been enough, but, but Daniel Eberhardt's gonna be fortunate. He's still gonna race car underneath him. Yeah, he got very, very fortunate right there. That could have ended badly. Could have been contact with the wall. He could have spun that car through the grass. Either way, he's able to live the fight another day. He's got a big gap though that he's going to have to make up at this point. He's down three tenths again to that 88 car of Andrew Frenars. And now you also have to wonder, did he upset the tires by sliding them like that coming off the corner a couple of laps ago? If he did, he's going to have to let them tires cool back off for a couple of laps before he can really go up there and charge for the race lead once again. But it doesn't look, look like there's any issues because he continues to close right back in on that back bumper of Andrew Frenars. Runs high down in one and two. I cannot believe that Andrew Freenars is giving him the outside line down here in one and two as well. You can see how much momentum that he is able to carry. He's able to get right to the back bumper of Freenars as they head to three and four. And once again, he goes up to take that line away down here in the corner. Now, can Everhart make it happen again? He was able to take that lead away once before. He's going to have to do it all over again as we get closer and closer to the end of this thing. Yeah, the Nani machine kind of knows the uh, what the 88 is going to do to him, and I think Farinar is also aware of the playbook. The 88 has also somewhat adjusted his line in recent laps to kind of adopt that 90 car strategy. Go high, swing low, and he entered uh, a lot lower than he maybe should have that time at a turn two. See right here, the 88, he's basically trying to take that line away from the 90, go down low, mimicking him. Typically, it's the trailing car that kind of learns things Things from the faster car right in front of him. Somebody passes you up, you kind of see what they're doing. Farinars is learning out the rear view mirror through all of this. Well, and he might have just opened the door for Daniel Eberhardt because right there, I would have ran the top in one and two like Eberhardt's been doing because now look at the run that Eberhardt gets. He's down to the bottom of the racetrack for the lead. Once again, he was able to, able to take the lead on the bottom once before. Can he do it again? This time, Farinars tries to pinch him down. He's going to try to carry that speed off the corner to take that lead back. Andrew fights back hard. He almost makes contact with the wall, but the momentum's going to carry the 88 back to the lead. Eberhardt has to fight on the bottom, but Freenars clears him once again for the race lead. Once again, the 88 machine used the Nadani strategy against him and squeezed through on the outside of four, and he continues to lead in this race. And through all of this, nobody else catching up. It's not like this battle for the race lead is affecting their gap. It's actually grown now to two seconds over new third place runner Jason Jacoby. So Jacoby just recently passed it to Carl Shedd. I appreciate sure it's one of the first times Carl Shedd's fallen down in position all night. He's currently scored in an upper four spot. But again, the 88 just can't make this line work in one and two. He's low all the way through. Here's the big run for the Nani. He wants to get outside, and he's close enough. The 88 chicken out of throwing the block. And now Everhart's in his wheelhouse here. Outside and side by side for the lead. Look at the run out of four. It's not even going to be close. Almost contact there is. Farinars with a bobble and he'll hang on. Daniel Eberhardt to the race lead. And that could have been huge for the 88 of Andrew Freenars Had that car hooked back to the right and got into the turn four wall, we could have seen another big points implication for that 88 car. But now he has given up the race lead and he has given up a ton of time to Daniel Eberhardt. And all of a sudden the entire playoff grid flips once again as now Andrew Freenars could potentially be back on the offense having to try to fight for points as Daniel Eberhardt now would currently hold a spot in Miami if he can hold on to this thing for the last 28 laps. He's going to go to the championship four with a chance to race for a championship here. But now the question has to become, we're inside that last 28 laps of this race, Evan Pasoko. Do these drivers at the front of the field have enough fuel to make it to the finish? Or are they going to have to come back to pit road and surrender this thing to guys like Brandon Bowie, um, uh, Daniel, or, or Daniel Falkingham, David Comstock, 
Kyle Kamer, Spencer Preet, all these drivers that pitted with one to go that might potentially have enough fuel to make it to the finish. And that's the big question that remains as this race has gone green. And this time by, uh, next time by, I should say, in fact, it'll be three-quarter distance and 25 laps to go in this race from Texas. So all of this is going to come to a uh, culmination here pretty much all at once as Everhart now wants to run away to win this race. Jacoby Shedd and everybody else, uh, presumably, especially those who didn't come down into the pit lane, not going to be able to make it because those, listen, everybody pitted on the most recent caution to fly, but we saw about four or five drivers come in top off about two laps later than that. It's only about a one lap difference, Brian, if you consider the difference between, uh, you know, how much fuel you use under caution to fly conditions, and they were still saving. So in reality, the difference between the two groups, not a ton, but if it really is that tight, could certainly be the difference maker well it's not a ton when you think of when they pitted but you also have to look at the the speeds that these two different groups are driving right now daniel eberhardt andrew Brenard is running some of the hottest laps all night long trying to go up here and battle for the race lead where your other drivers with the exception of brandon Bowie, they have been running off the pace on purpose since the drop of the green trying to save fuel they're cutting the cars off a little early going into the corner they're not accelerating as hard off the corner they're trying to save every ounce that they can to make sure they can make it to the end. Brandon Bowie is the only one of those guys that have not, and like we've mentioned, he's already got a spot in the final four. He has absolutely nothing to lose. If he runs this thing out of gas and doesn't make it to the finish line, he's still going to Miami with a shot to win the championship. So I believe that's why the 43 has went up through this field. He's charged up to the sixth position and is fighting hard to possibly break into the top five where everybody else has hung back and is trying to save as much gas as possible. In the 43 machine, just trying to make a lot of noise. And, and as you mentioned, most importantly, and he mentioned this as well, when we talked with him last week at Barnesville, that a race winner could keep some other drivers out. He could play a spoiler, take a automatic ticket in away from seeing Eberhard or Farinars, because again, those are the two that entered tonight, seventh and eighth. And right now they run one, two for one of them. Uh, it could possibly be a ticket to punch to home center, a trip to the championship four, and for the other, you know, barely in or only out by a little bit. That's how much a difference is between first and second. You're not looking at the difference in points available. The only thing that matters is first place is a golden ticket and second place is not. And if you're Andrew Freenars, you have to be concerned right now because you came into this thing uh, well outside of the cutoff by five points. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but like you said, when you have a short field like this, you're not really able to make up a ton of points. Uh, if you have to pit here and some of these other drivers do not, not only are you giving away the race win, but you're giving away a ton of points to guys that are chasing you for a spot in that final four. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting last 20 laps. I really can't wait to see how it all plays out. I'm very curious to see if these guys up front can make it to the end. And I'm also very curious to see if those guys cannot, which of these drivers that is in the back is going to be able to go to the front. Brandon Bowie is in the catbird seat. He's the highest running, but as aggressive as he's been, did he burn off that extra the fuel that he's, he managed to get by coming in that one to go uh, and is he going to be able to make it to the end so there's a lot of storylines for these last 20 laps and it's going to be absolutely wild and it all depends on if this race stays green or what happens as it continues to work deeper and deeper into the night 20 laps to go this time as Daniel Eberhard really starts to pull away for the race lead, the top Andrew Freenar second and Jason Jacoby third. The seventh car representing the first of your non-playoff drivers. Uh, and then, of course, you do have Dylan Jones in the mix, uh, Brandon Bowie, who has already advanced, and then Carl Shedd, who uh, the 45 car, not really liking the long green flying run here, has uh, fallen from third two down to uh, to pick P6, I should say, uh, really in the last five, ten laps or so. So struggling as these tires get to their breaking point. Absolutely. This is the point of the run where the grip is completely gone. We, this is the longest run we've had all night, and, and there is absolutely no grip left on these tires. You are just slipping and sliding all the way around this racetrack. It's hard to keep the car straight on the, the straightaways at this point uh, because there's so little grip left in the tires. And 
And that's what really makes this track fun though. Once the tires go away, once the grip goes away and you can really kind of just skate around and you have to search, but Andrew Freenard is not giving up on the bottom of the racetrack. I cannot believe that he is stuck committed to the inside line, especially seeing that 90 car go up there, take the lead away from him and then stay up on the outside line once he took it. I think if I was Andrew Freenard, I'd have to try to move up there and see if I can do something different. But he did gain three tenths that last time by, so maybe he's found something down there that's working for him as he's trying to close back in on that number 90 car. This battle may not be over for the race lead. Battle for the race lead may not be done as it is all of a sudden closed back up. We do have a fight for third on our hands. Could it be critical points available for Dylan Jones who entered a fourth at a points only two above the first spot out, which was David Comstock. He runs in front of Comstock on track right now and he is trying to pass Jacoby as we see Eric Stanford who has come down, admitted that he could not make it on fuel and gotten fuel and tires trying to go through, but uh, Jacoby not going to let him, so the 19's got a lift. And that's, that's the first sign that some of these other drivers that are at the front of the field are not going to be able to make it because Eric Stanford was on the same strategy as your race leaders, Daniel Everhart, Andrew Freenars, Jason Jacoby, all these drivers uh, that did not come in and top off with one to go. They're on the same deal that Eric Stanford was on, and he has already come to the pit road and given up his idea of making it to the finish. So now I have to be very concerned if I'm any of these other drivers, how tight is it going to be? And could Brandon Bowie be the spoiler in all of this? He's sitting in the fifth position. He's only 2.6 seconds behind the race leaders. And now if I'm Brandon Bowie, if there's any doubt that I'm going to make it to the end, I'd be going in full conservation mode because I have seen the hand be played by the guys that I am chasing. I know there's a very good chance they're not going to go to the finish. And I have a big gap over the rest of these drivers that did the, that did the same strategy as him. I would be backing off and making sure that there's no threat of me running out of fuel. There goes set 19 now around your race leaders as Daniel Everhart runs way up top and of course, at 88, gaining into the corner may be a little bit deceptive because that's really the real gap right you see right here. Four car lengths uh, between the two. But maybe Fernandar's found a little bit something here in the long and waning hours of what will be the longest green flying run of the night if it holds. With Everhart atop now still, that same margin. Two very different lines, two nearly identical lap times. They were within a half of a hundredth of each other that last time through shows you that there is no one way around this joint and these drivers using uh, the creative freedoms if you will to find something jones by the way is able to get through in the third so he passes jacoby and jacoby under fire from Bowie. So a lot of playoff drivers making late pushes here gobbling up critical points and every point is critical whether it be a playoff driver you're passing or not you need every position you can at this point because it's going to come down to the wire next week at phoenix for a couple of these drivers i have a feeling it might be must win situations for them uh, so it's going to be very interesting but this battle for the race lead is heating back up in a big way as andrew freenarge is there that four car length gap is nothing and now they're going to be side by side down here in three and four this could be for a ticket to homestead so you've got to give it everything you've got if you're both of these drivers and we saw andrew freenarge give up the race lead on the bottom can he take it back on the bottom of the racetrack because everhart has not uh, backed off of that outside line since he took the race lead he's running up against the wall on both ends of the racetrack but now free Arge is using the bottom of the racetrack to his advantage. They remain side by side as they come off turn two. He'll side by side, 90 though with the run. Again, he, he, now he's able to return the favor, do every little thing that Ferdinars did to him back to the drive of the 88 machine, and that includes taking that preferred line away up on the outside of the racetrack and getting that big run off the corner, kind of daring him to make something work down on the inside line, way up tops to 90, way down low's Farinars, and yeah, they are side by side in two, but that's not really a threat for the 88. See, there's no way he holds that. It's gonna be very difficult to make that pass on the bottom of the racetrack. There is lap traffic once again. David Washington up here in front of these guys. I don't think he's gonna be a factor though, as Everhart once again gets the big run off the corner. He's gonna clear Andrew Freenars to hold on to the race lead. And now he's got the opportunity to try to work past the 98 without the threat of Andrew Freenars being there as Freenars goes back to the bottom of the racetrack again. And David Washington actually in the line that Eberhardt has been running. Is he going to be able to get below him? This is going to be very tight. He's able to squeeze below the 98 of David Washington to take that position away. That could have ended badly for Daniel Eberhardt. Now he goes right back to the outside line and Freenars on the bottom of the racetrack trying to do what he can. You have to start thinking about these guys behind him though because Dylan Jones is in third and he has cut that gap down to less than a second. He's only uh, about a second behind him as they run right now. 
So maybe the sleeper pick into all of this as those drivers fought up front the first time you mentioned that it wasn't costing them any time. And that was when Carl Shedd was in third, but now maybe a different story. Four tenths faster the last time by for Dylan Jones from third place who's driving like a man possessed. And at this point, there's no way any of these drivers could be saving on fuel. You gotta hope you've got eight more laps to go as Dylan Jones now this time at a turn four loses a little bit of time on the swing as they think he almost got up into the outside wall. These drivers at the front of the field will have to have ran 57 laps on a tank of gas uh, to make it to the finish. That is going to be very, very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible because it is definitely possible, but it's going to be very impressive if they're able to make that much of a run without having to come back to pit road for fuel. And the way these guys are racing right now, I have to believe they think they can make it to the end. Andrew Freenard gets a little sideways off turn four, somehow hangs on to that car, but that gave up a ton of time to the race leader, Daniel Eberhardt, and now he's almost fallen to the clutches of Dylan Jones. Meanwhile, side by side for third, Brandon Bowie challenging Jason Jacoby, trying to take that position away. Jacoby fights hard on the outside line. Bowie cannot take that position away. Bowie's in the best position out of all of these drivers. If he can get ahead of Jacoby, Evan Masoko, this could be the spoiler in all of this. Those other drivers aren't going to be able to go all the way. The 43 of Bowie going to play a spoiler and get a second straight win. Take a guaranteed ticket to Homestead away from any of the three drivers that are battling for the race lead in front of him. Look at Dylan Jones now. He's there. Tries to maybe split the difference, but I think he might get second away because still down low is Farinars. No speed off of the quarter. And now Dylan Jones does get into P2. Almost three wide for the race lead. Jones to the inside and Freenars below him. Everhart holds him off on the outside line. Five laps to go here at the Texas Motor Speedway and Everhart drives his butt off off of turn four to try to take that position or hold on to that race lead. Now you see he moves down the, the race, uh, race line in turns one and two, trying to play defense. He's trying to hold off Dylan Jones. He now has a new threat for the first time. It's not the 88 car he has to worry about. It's Dylan Jones. Now he goes to the outside line again down here in three and four. Can he hold him off as we get down to four laps remaining in this thing? Jones on the inside once again. And Bowie and Jacoby are side by side for fourth. Bowie is going to get the spot. So Brandon Bowie now fourth. The top five cars within less than a second of each other. That time by, it was four laps remaining. Eberhardt still protecting the inside line. Jones digs right there, nose to nose. And he gets a great run on the turn two. He's there. So they'll go side by side to turn three. Can Dylan Jones drive it in deep enough? Or is the runoff of the corner going to be too much? Much to handle. Eberhard beats him again in four. The 90 car good under pressure three more times around. Brandon Bowie is taking the third position away from Andrew Freenars. I believe Freenars might be backing off to save fuel. He has really started slowing down his pace here in the last couple of laps, so there's a little bit of a concern. Meanwhile, battles on for the race lead. Jones inches ahead. Can Eberhardt fight back? They're, the, they're side by side down the back straightaway. Everhart tries to do everything he can. He sails the car off into the corner. Dylan Jones does the same on the bottom. And it looks like Everhart might be able to hang on one more time as they come to two laps to go here at Texas. Two laps to go for the Texas Motor Speedway. Eberhardt's going to pull about a car length and a half here. That was one of his better quarter exits. So Jones down low has his work caught up for him. And then he's slow in the center. The 11's almost clear right there. He needs to get by him, but he cannot. So Eberhardt gets that run down the back straightaway. But Dylan Jones is set up pretty in turn three as we look for the white flag. Off turn four, coming to the white flag. Dylan and Jones on the bottom. Eberhardt on the outside line. They see the white flag. Now the question is, can they make it to the finish? Dylan Jones inches ahead down in one and two. Can Eberhardt fight back on the outside? He's given up this line. And Jones slots ahead. He gets clear of the, the 90 car. Clear to the race lead as they work down the backstretch for the final time. Dylan Jones clears it. Eberhardt and Anani car is going to try to get back into three and four, but it's going to be too little, too late. And the time he finally breaks through is Jones on the inside. Still digging sideways out of four. He's got Eberhard it as Eberhardt runs out behind him. Dylan Jones wins from Texas. He is headed to Homestead to fight for the championship. Bowie gets second, and the Nandi car sputters home to P3.
I cannot believe all of those drivers made it to the checkered flag on fuel. Eberhardt sputtered coming off the corner. That's how close these guys were on fuel, and they never faltered from their strategy. I didn't see these drivers conserving fuel or trying to make sure they can make it to the end. They drove those cars to the finish and battled it out. And Eberhardt, man, if he could have gotten off of turn four without running out of gas, he might have had a shot at that 11 car. Instead, he does give up a position to Brandon Bowie. We'll have to see how critical that one position on the racetrack is to that number 90 car. Could be the difference maker when it comes down to the very end of this season. But how about Dylan Jones, who's the one celebrated on the front straightaway, had about 10 laps to do it. And on the second to last quarter, finally, he makes it stick down low. And again, I'll completely agree with you, Brian DeBase, that all those drivers, even if some of them were sputtering, are able to make it to the end of this race. Dylan Jones, he's going up to do burnouts. The number 11 car, plenty for Dylan Jones. What a run after we saw these drivers with their pit stops earlier on lap number 44 is when the field came in. We questioned, were they going to be able to make it to the end? A couple of cars had to come down to top off. Dylan Jones was not one of them. He was steadfast, stayed out on track, and obviously was able to save enough to make that big charge late, Brian, when everybody else realized they were going to be short and had to back way off. Yeah, I saw Andrew Freenarge back off with like four laps to go. I realized that he knew he wasn't going to make it to the end on fuel. He gave up four seconds to the race leaders in that last couple of laps. And what that was for the 88 car is he knew he was no longer in a position to win the race. He had to go into point-saving mode. If he had ran out of gas and gave up five or six more positions on the racetrack, he's already in a hole coming into this thing. He cannot afford to give up too many points. Uh, so he had to do what was necessary for his chance to get to Homestead by trying to save as many points as possible. And we'll see what the end result of that is. Let's look top to bottom at your LSR TV. Full race results tonight from the Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, Dylan Jones is your race winner. Uh, the end of March, it is going to be uh, half a second up on top of Brandon Bowie uh, with Daniel Eberhardt third, Carl Shedd fourth, and uh, Andrew Ferdinand trickles back to P5. We'll try to go trackside with your top three finishers momentarily. Michael Gorelli gets a P6 finish at all of this. Dwayne Vincent comes home in seventh. David Comstock is eighth spot. Michael Cozy Jr. ninth. And Jason Jacoby, somebody else who falls out of it late he'll round out your top 10 ross cato will finish in the 11th position here tonight followed by daniel falkingham he came in in the second position in points it's going to be very interesting to see how this finish hurts him in the playoff uh, grid we'll update here in just a few moments kyle kamer will finish in the 13th spot spencer pre also one of those drivers that was above the cut line coming in he finishes 14th here tonight so a big hit for another one of our playoff drivers eric stanford finishes 15th then we have tom morano finishing 16th david washington comes home in 17th and then Galen Gidman was the only driver that did not make it to the checkered flag here tonight. He finishes in the 18th position and will round out our 18-car field. And Evan Pasoko, we talked to Daniel Eberhardt just a couple of weeks ago when he won at Kansas. Now you get to talk to him down in victory lane once again. But this time, that victory is so much sweeter because he is going to Miami with a shot to win. The checkered flying tonight from Texas does indeed guarantee himself a spot on the grid at home. Said Miami, Dylan Jones is your Texas 150 winner. Track side of the 11 out. Dylan, congratulations on the win. A uh, victory lane place that you are certainly no stranger to this season. But uh, it has been a little while since we've seen this 11 car close without. And uh, you want to talk about clutch. I'm sure the points were a lot tighter than you wanted into tonight. They are no longer, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we hit a little bit of a slump there after uh, the great mid-season uh, towards the end there. We were on a little bit of a roll, and it uh, kind of sucks that that fell off going into the championship rounds, and the Martinsville race is definitely one we wanted to forget and we really needed to make up for right here. And uh, we just kind of hid from everyone, I guess, tonight. And it pays off. Tell us about this one, because uh, question to Mark uh, was obviously the fuel strategy, and uh, if it went green, Brian and I speculating what the call was going to be, maybe just pit halfway, go all the way, and then we get a caution to flag uh, at about lap 42 or so. You guys pit, and I think the restarts with uh, is with 56 laps to go in this race. That's certainly a long way. A lot of drivers dove down to the pit lane wanting a little bit extra. You weren't concerned, and it uh, looked like Daniel started to sputter across the line. But, I mean, you guys had tons. You had enough fuel to do donuts. So tell us about the, uh, the strategy there to conserve, and then, of course, that late charge up front to steal this thing. 
Yeah, when I seen those guys dive off, I wasn't really sure. I knew we were going to be close. That was that was kind of the right call for him. But uh, I just started saving from lap one till about 20. I ran like half throttle. And uh, the guys up front said they were they were going to be close to probably running out. So I just kept saving and saving. And then they started to have to save at the end. Uh, so we were able to reel them in because I could go at the end. We ended up with about a lap of fuel left. So it, it all worked out. You don't normally get to win races like this with only two laps led on the night, so it certainly pays off well. What kind of uh, cushion and confidence, peace of mind, does this give you headed into Phoenix? Because tonight it was plus two, and if you finish second or third in this race, you still get a ton of points, but you know that's always a racetrack headed into ISM, a short track where things can maybe get a little bit more crazier than they tend to do at Texas. Oh, uh, yeah. You always want to make sure you can uh, punch your ticket in as early as possible and on a track that you kind of have more control over compared to where Phoenix is going. You never know what might happen. Some bumpers might be rubbed. Some uh, feelings might be hurt. So we uh, can go in there uh, on ease. And the other six drivers who are still left get to fight over that. That's next Monday right here on the iRay City Sports Network. Dylan, you've got a lot to celebrate. Sixth win on 2018. We'll let you get to that. But before we do, as always, sponsors and shout outs. Who's made the 11 to car go so fast that now put you guys in a spot to battle for a title? Thank all the guys at LSR TV for putting on the great broadcast uh, and all the guys at Aegis and uh, we're moving on. We appreciate uh, that you're here week in, week out, uh, supporting the series, Dylan. Congratulations again on the win. Thrilling fashion. It always makes things uh, a lot of uh, fun for us here topside, so we always appreciate that. But congrats on the W. We'll certainly see you next week, but uh, maybe if it doesn't come down to uh, us chatting with you, good luck at Homestead. We'll catch you there. Thank you. He's the second driver that's locked into the championship for Dylan Jones, your race winner tonight from Texas Motor Speedway. It's a second place result for Brandon Bowie. Doesn't matter because as of last week, we talked about it all night. He's also now waited in Homestead. And well, tonight he almost played spoiler Brian. Still a good result. P2, you're with the driver of the 43. Yeah, very close to playing spoiler here tonight, Brandon Bowie. You came in and topped off with one to go coming back to the green flag. Did you think that was the call that was going to get you to victory lane? Obviously, you came up just a hair short. We saw where Daniel Eberhardt ran out coming to the line, and, and Dylan Jones just barely had enough fuel as well. It almost had it worked out for you. Uh, Yeah, uh, I, I really thought that might have been the thing to do. Um, but obviously, it wasn't because I'm my uh, Dylan one. But, um, yeah, I mean, the the it's like... Last week, I told you I was I was gonna go for it no matter what. I didn't care who was who was, who was I racing against or anything like that. I just wanted to try to take wins away, which unfortunately I was not able to do today. But I think I kept it honest and really pushed, especially Dylan, uh, to go up there and really do something. Well, and and how difficult was it to decide how hard you were gonna drive on that last run? We saw you. Uh, going out there and running really aggressively after the restart, where the rest of the guys that came in, they seemed like they hung in the back, maybe like they were trying to save enough fuel to make sure they could make it to the end. Did you take advantage of the fact that you don't have any worries about going to Homestead? Is that why you ran so aggressive compared to everybody else? Uh, Yeah, that, that's probably a big part of it. Uh, I kind of told them if I run out, I run out. I really didn't care. Um, But I, I felt pretty confident that I would have about a lap or two left, and that I had about a lap and a half left at the end so um you know a couple of mistakes i made i i feel like i didn't pressure dylan as much as i could have uh could have probably moved around the track a little bit but i was just trying to make sure that i could stay with him um but at the end i mean he at the end he had a rocket i don't know <laughs> what he was doing but he was able to pull from me and i i couldn't keep up with him anymore and with two weeks left until Homestead, now all the focus for you and for Dylan Jones obviously starts uh, turning to Homestead Miami in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, looking past Phoenix, what do you have to do to go out there and try to back up the performance you had last year down at Homestead? You won that race. Obviously, if you could do that again this year, you'd be a champion. Uh, basically, do the same thing I did today. Uh, I think today's performance was a lot better than my win at Martinsville. Um, I felt like I was just consistent, smooth. Uh, pit stops weren't the best that they could have been. Uh, I need to probably work on that a little bit. Um, but if I can just, honestly, if I can just run uh, top five, um, you know, and save my tires and be there at the end to be able to make the right moves and take the lead, that that's pretty much all I need to do. 
Well, before we let you go, Brandon, sponsor Shadow 2 makes it happen for on that 43 car. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, it's going to be uh, racingbits.com. Uh, go ahead and check out their website. They have uh, memorabilia you can buy um, or even just look at. <laughs> Some of the stuff is really, really good on there. Um, and got to also thank Commodore's Garage for coming on board. They helped me out with understanding uh, settings and understanding the racing lines and stuff like that to get me better at being a better driver. Uh, got to thank uh, the rest of the guys I race with, uh, Daniel, David, you know, the, the rest of the crew. Um, thank you guys for broadcasting tonight, and got to thank the family. Well, congrats on your runner-up finish here tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next week at Phoenix, Brandon. All right, thanks, Brian. No stress, no worries for the 43 car. He won last week at Martinsville. Go almost gets the win here tonight at Texas. We'll have to see how he does next week at Phoenix. Now I'm going to catch up with our third-place driver, Mr. Daniel Eberhardt, who was so fast at the beginning of this race and then came up just a, about a what, 100 yards short of making it to the end on fuel, Daniel. A great race between you and Andrew Freenars, and then right there at the end between you and Dylan. Unfortunately, the fuel cell just didn't agree. Yeah, I was trying to save while we were racing. I don't know what happened. It just I guess it got out of uh, hand with me, and I didn't know I was focusing more on racing. And when Dylan pulled up beside me, I was like, this guy's going to beat me. This guy right here has saved more fuel because he backed off, and he's going to beat me. So I had to start going hard when he got up beside me, and then right when he cleared me, I said, it's over. And then he clipped the apron. I wasn't sputtering yet coming out of four, and I was like, I'm going to get him. And then the whole car just died, and I was like, dang it. So, I mean, all in all, I finished third, and it's good points day, but really I wanted to win so I could get on into Homestead and wouldn't have to worry about Phoenix next week. But uh, I hope them points are right that are posted. Uh, we're one point to the good right now sitting in third, so that's going to be a crazy race in Phoenix. And that is the unofficial points. You are one point to the good. Of course, the, the points are so tight if you look at it uh, with Falkingham holding that cutoff spot. And he is tied with Michael Gurea, one point back to Andrew Freenar. So uh, with that being said, and, and obviously the one point per position on the racetrack thing, uh, how aggressive are you going to have to be next week at Phoenix to make sure you get enough points to transfer to the Final Four? I'm really not sure. You know, they play a lot of head games. They try doing whatever they need to do to try to get in and you know, kudos to them guys, but we don't play stupid where we're from. So, I mean, they can do whatever they want to do, wreck us or whatever, but that's shame on them. Uh, I mean, we know the head games they play. They think we played it all season, but truth is we just race hard like we did tonight. And uh, I'll just call them out on their bull crap, but they're uh, going to be competitive each and every week, and we'll be right there with them, and we're going to have to run aggressive, and we're going to have to pace ourselves, and hopefully – the three Aegis guys that have been the lead three Aegis guys all year long get in. It's going to be a knockdown drag out fight for sure next week at Phoenix. Before we let you go, Dan, sponsor, shout out to who makes it happen for that number 90 car. I got to thank everybody at Aegis. Got to thank Dylan, Dave, Andrew, Cato, uh, Kamer, and Eric. I got to thank all them guys. They, uh, they're true help each and every week, and they're great teammates to be with each and every week. And I got to thank the good Lord above because nothing – would be done without him and uh i gotta thank my girlfriend who sits there and watches us each and every week and thank you guys for putting this on and we'll come back next week and see what we got well congrats on your good run here tonight good luck next week at phoenix and maybe you'll be in the final four in a couple of weeks time thank you sir that was daniel eberhardt he came up just about a hundred yards short on the fuel with an opportunity to go to miami he was digging for everything he could have in Pasoco. But unfortunately, when you're racing that hard, you're not saving fuel. And you have to now question maybe if he had saved fuel for just a couple of laps, somewhere in that run, he might have been able to make it. We might have had a completely different outlook on this playoff uh, grid. And instead, here's what the points look like with Brandon Bowie and Dylan Jones having locked into the next round. Daniel Eberhardt is correct. He is one point to the good. There is a tie for the final transfer position. Daniel Falkenham has it on the tiebreaker, we believe. And of course, this is unofficial, but he would be in by none. And Michael Gorilla is out by none in P5, so that tie has to be broken next week. It is then one point out for Farinars in sixth. Two points out for Comstock in seventh, and four points out for Spencer Predu as the bad night tonight trickles down five positions and will head in as the very back spot. So you have in the points right now third through eighth spot separated by only five. Phoenix is going to be insane next week. You're not going to want to miss that one. 
Absolutely not. And with all of these guys still realistically within a, a shot to make it to Miami, uh, as we heard uh, Daniel Eberhardt say, there's going to be some mind games being played next week at Phoenix. Who's going to make the moves? Who's going to be aggressive? Who might make some strategy calls to try to, to split up the front of the field and, to, and make take some chances there? It's going to be a very interesting race. And Phoenix, in its own right, almost races like a short track. So you can expect to see some some beating and banging, maybe a bump and run coming to the checkered flag if that's what it takes to get to Homestead. I imagine we might see what we saw Ryan Newman do a couple of years ago to bulldog his way into the final four at Homestead. Uh, do not be surprised at all if we see some bent fenders and some hurt feelings at the end of the next week's race. It's all going to come down to the trip to ISM. That's next Monday, the 19th. You do not want to miss it right back here on LSR TV and the iRay City Sports Network. Good news is more live to make action coming to you between now and then. The round of eight ends this Wednesday, November the 14th, with the East Speed Contender Series as their playoffs head to ISM. That's at 9 o'clock Eastern. Start right here on the iRay City Sports Network and back over on the LSR TV channel at iRay City Live this Thursday. Also 9 o'clock start for the Cessra Series as that championship continues. Of course, you can find our full broadcast schedule online at Triple www.limesteracing.com and by keeping up to date with us on social media give us a follow over on twitter at lsr tv and you can like us at facebook.com forward slash lsr tv official for more information on behalf of our entire team at lsr tv the people behind the scenes the folks who make it happen in the booth night in and night out and of course for your team tonight for myself evan pasoko for brian Backland, and our producer brett wheeler we want to thank you for tuning in and congratulate dylan jones He's championship bound. The next race will end the round of eight. It comes on Monday, November the 19th from ISM Raceway. That race and every race of the Full Throttle Wheels of Racing Cup Series playoffs powered by English Auto LLC can be found right here on LSR TV at the iRacing Esports Network. Until then, good night from Texas. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of Live Sim Racing LLC and iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. The following is a special presentation of iRacing on LSR-TV, your home for sim racing.